and welcome to another edition of the Ask Dr. Pickel Show, where we help people find answers to uh, chronic conditions, chronic health problems. All right, so today I want to go over a few things um, related to blood sugar issues. Um, I've got a lot of questions lately from people asking me, like, how do I know if my blood sugar is high? I had a um, gentleman come in and he said, you know, uh, my doctor said my blood sugar is a little high, but it's not too high. We'll just continue to monitor it and see how it goes. He goes, I don't know if I have diabetes, if I don't, or could you help me with this? Because they really aren't giving me a straight answer. And um, also he's worried because of the effects on his health. And, and I hear this from a lot of patients. What is good blood sugar? What's bad blood sugar? And, um, you know, how do I really know this? Because um, patients will be able to look at their lab tests in their lab portal, usually from their doctor, or they'll get printouts of their labs or things like that. So they can kind of look and say, hey, you know, how's my blood sugar doing? Because it is important. Blood sugar is extremely important. And um, so we want to kind of look at that uh, and, and see what all is, um, uh, what's what you need to know, you know, kind of these numbers, what do these numbers mean and, and what's important, what's not. And I think this can be a great guide because, you know, when you do get your blood work, when you look at this, you can use this information and say, hey, where am I really at? You know, my doctor said this, but where am I really at? So let's, uh, let's dive right in with this. All right. So on your blood sugar lab tests, of course, it might say elevated glucose on there if you do have any blood sugar issues. And really, we like to see you between about an 85 to 99 functionally. 85 to 100, I guess you could even say that. So if your blood sugar starts to get up to greater than 100, oops, technical issue there, Little, greater than 100, this is early insulin resistance. This is the very early signs of prediabetes. Insulin resistance, prediabetes, those terms go hand in hand. Um, and this means that your body's not able to utilize insulin properly, which carries blood sugar. So the blood sugar is not getting into your cells. See some of our past videos on diabetes, and that'll give you a little more explanation of, uh, of the background of insulin resistance, diabetes, prediabetes, what those terms mean a little more. But definitely, if that glucose gets above that um, level, then we have um, prediabetes. Now, another sign of this can be you're starting to feel tired after meals, you're craving sweets after meals. Yeah, this means your blood sugar is going a little too high. All right. Yeah. All right. And then next, another thing that'll show up is your triglycerides can start to run a little high. Triglycerides are the stored form of blood sugar. So your body's saying, hey, there's a lot of extra floating in the bloodstream. Let's store it for later because um, we can't use it all right now because it's not getting into the cells. So what happens when your body starts to store? Yeah, it stores on the liver, could potentially lead to fatty liver, stores in your muscles, um, stores in other areas of your body, so we can start to get weight gain. Um, definitely these early signs of elevated um, blood sugar. All right, and then next, um, we have kind of the next stage. So if it goes a little higher, if your glucose starts to get between 100 and 127, yeah, this is definitely prediabetes, insulin resistance, or metabolic syndrome is kind of another word that we'll say when that gets advanced a little further. But again, that 100 to 127 range, your triglycerides start to go a little higher. In fact, your triglycerides at this point will be higher than your cholesterol level, and that's when we'll really know it's truly that metabolic syndrome, prediabetes. And then, of course, your cholesterol rises, your bad cholesterol called your LDL rises, your good cholesterol called your HDL goes down, um, and then your uric acid rises. What's uric acid? Uric acid is something that's processed in your liver, but it can deposit around your joints, especially we'll find it deposits around joints that carry the most weight, which is your big toe. And this is, you've heard of, called gout. So we don't want to get gout, but that's a blood sugar inflammatory problem. All right. So let's say that blood sugar keeps climbing. Let's say the blood says this, 
the doctor says, hey, wait and see. Why don't you just start eating better, exercising? Um, and maybe you don't, or maybe you do, and it makes you feel worse so you don't, or maybe you do and you continue to have issues. Um, but if it advances to diabetes, that's when your blood sugar shows greater than or equal to 126. And then um, your A1C gets greater than a 6.5. Now, that hemoglobin A1C test, that's kind of an average blood sugar over a period of time. This is a really good marker for blood sugar because it really tells us, you know, what your average look like. Um, are you averaging high? Or are we just getting fluctuations? Because these kind of tests for any type of blood sugar need to be done fasting. And, you know, if you start to climb above a 5.6, maybe above a 5.7, um, then you're in these early stages of insulin resistance. That's on your A1C test. And, you know, you can get these done at the lab. And, and you, there's also those, you know, you can stick your finger and check your blood sugar too. And you, they even have the home test now for the A1C also. So any of these can be done via a blood lab or some home testing. Although the home testing, I would say not quite as accurate, but at least gives you a general, um, uh, numbers there. But definitely when you get into that diabetes scenario, when you get above that 6.5, that's not good. That means blood sugar is depositing throughout your body. It's depositing on the liver. It's deposit. You're gaining weight. It's actually um, starting to deposit on nerves. And so if it deposits on nerves enough, yeah, we can start to get neuropathy, uh, we can, which is nerve damage. Now I can't feel my feet or I feel tingling or I feel like I'm walking on pins and needles or I'm getting, um, you know, lack of sensation overall. Um, and it doesn't have to just occur in the feet. It can occur in the hands. It can occur, it can occur anywhere. In fact, if neuropathy starts to increase in your body, it'll eventually affect the brain too. Um, also, it can affect the nerves that go to the eye. So we can start to get even visual issues. I mean, there's so diabetes can lead to, it has so many other negative potentials uh, with the body. But definitely the thing is though, is all of this from diabetes down to early insulin resistance. Of course, the earlier you catch it, the easier it is to deal with. But even if you catch it later, this can be dealt with. But here's the thing. It takes time and it takes commitment to change. You know, this isn't an overnight quick fix. You can take a drug that adds in some more insulin in and kind of get your blood sugar down. It'll bring that number down, but it didn't help the cause of the problem. Um, so you can treat the symptoms, you can treat the numbers, but the true causative issues have to be addressed. And many times those can be dietary, um, but a, a lot of times there's other issues going on too that we find in patients that are leading to this in the first place, especially inflammatory issues. So, the, the problem is, is, you know, maybe when you're in early insulin resistance, um, insulin resistance, you know, uh, you might even try to exercise and, um, you know, that can help at that point. But when you get into full blown diabetes, you go exercise, you might be in bed the next day or two because you felt so horrible afterwards because of the amount of inflammation that was generated. So it's not just the easiest thing. It's not like, hey, just go out and exercise and eat right. That's what I hear. So many patients will come in and they'll say, oh, my doctor just told me I need to eat right, exercise, and, um, and then hopefully I can avoid medication or take this medication alongside that, and then you'll do fine. But the thing is, is yeah, number one, every person is different. Number two, yeah, if you exercise and you have certain inflammatory things going on, you can make yourself worse too. So things have to be done at a, in a certain way. Things have to be kind of like if you do exercise, it's got to be at a certain amount. It's got to be correct for where you're at at that point in time. All right. And even the diet, the diet uh, and certain other factors of uh, eating or drinking or, you know, if you're a smoker or something like there's a lot of things that may have to change in your life. But this can absolutely be changed and gotten under control and people can recover from this. But again, it takes time, it takes some commitment. All right. Okay, well, I hope everybody enjoyed today's information. And um, let me switch over here. And I hope everybody has a wonderful day and God bless.